Hello everyone and welcome back to Do Yourself. On this video, we're gonna do a follow-up on home wire networking too. So this video is gonna be about your home network, setting up the Wi-Fi and trying to hardwire as many locations as possible. Next, I'm gonna show you a diagram of the house. That way I can explain a little bit better what I did and what the plan is on this video and uh, what I did on video one, what I'm doing on this video number two and what I'm planning on doing on video number three. Okay, so this is the setup of my house. I try to use paint for it, just nothing too fancy. So every house is different, right? Not every house is gonna be the same. So it's it's up to you how strategically you wanna uh, place your, your routers throughout the house in order to get the best coverage. So this right here, it's the pole. Um, this is where my signal comes from. And this is where I, we did the underground um, the underground wire going from here all the way to a little bo junction box that we have here. The junction box. And then from ju that junction box, we put our, our, our modem right here. That's where our modem is. And then from here, we have another um, underground uh, pipe that goes to here and this is where our next smart panel is going to go smart panel then from this smart panel right here it's where all the cables are going to go at different locations so we have wires going to this is bedroom number one let's just make it easy and put a number well we'll do number two number one number three garage and then living room and then this is this will be my uh, my extra room I guess and this is my studio so for this video um, the goal was to hardwire this room right here hardwire this one right here this one we're not going to do today. We This is the garage we're not going to do today. And then we did this one right here, which is the TV. And then this one right here. So we're going to work on four locations, four hard wire locations that we're going to set up. And all these wires are going to run from here all the way here, all the way here. So that's going to be the, the, the route. So, and then these squares that you see right here are the are the routers. This is where I'm I'm planning on on, on installing my mesh network. So if I install it here, I think I'm gonna have a good um. I'm gonna have a good um. This is gonna cover the Wi-Fi on this whole area, and then if I install it here, it's gonna cover the Wi-Fi in the whole this area. So at the beginning of the video, I did a speed test and I was getting, I think somewhere around 15 megabytes here at the garage. So I'm hoping at the end of this video, I'll get um, at least 100 megabytes at the garage. Like I said, right now I'm only getting 15. Right now the router, the only router that I have, it's in this location right here. That's the only one I have at the moment right here. So I'm trying to add the other one right here and I'm going to be running the wires and I'll let you know how that works out. We're back at the room where we decided to put the main router and the purpose of this router will be to back feed into the switch. So since we're here, we're going to try to fix these connections here, all this ugly wiring that's uh, not properly set up at the moment. And then uh, we're going to take care of that one as well. We're going to add an outlet and we're going to add an Ethernet cable to it. That way we don't have a bunch of wires just coming down the TV the way it is at the moment. That white wire is going to be fed through the wall. And um, and then we're going to use the same Ethernet, uh, this uh, same outlet, power outlet to send power to the to that outlet up there. 
At the moment, we have the main router, which is again the Google router. And unfortunately, these routers, they're nice, but they only have one Ethernet connection, which is um, something I, I don't like about them. So one Ethernet cable, which is the, I believe it's this one. It's feeding the uh, from the modem, it's feeding the router. And this is back feeding. So at the moment I have this one back fitting my second router, which is this one. And then from here I have another cable going straight to the. So this is just a temporary fix. It's not um, it's not ideal. There's no per there's doesn't help having the two routers in the same room at all. Uh, for now we're gonna just take try to take care of that, and we're gonna have to try to take care of that. And then eventually we want to switch this router to a different location for the way from the from this uh, from the on the other side of the house. At the moment, um, I I was using this jack, and it has to be a Cat Six jack. So I highly recommend using Cat Six at a minimum since um, internet speeds are super fast, especially from your inner provider, they can, some uh, inner providers offer up to a thousand megabytes. So I highly recommend to use a minimum of CAT6. And this is a CAT6 rated jack. They're quite expensive. Uh, I didn't know they were gonna be that expensive. So you can connect it to a jack and then from the jack, you can put it nice into the wall and then use a patch core going to the router which is this one but instead of doing that and spending money on patch cores and stuff like that what i'm going to do i'm just going to put the connect this the, an rj45 connector here again they have to be cat 6 rated so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to be using cat 6 connector It's a lot cheaper. You can buy a whole box for, I don't remember how much they cost, but it was a lot cheaper than buying a bunch of jacks. And the less connections you have, the faster, obviously, because this is going to a jack to an ethernet cable. So this one will have the RJ45 here. So essentially you can just connect it straight to the router and you're reducing connections, splice points, and having a better connection. I'm gonna open up the, the power outlet and then I'm gonna tap into the power from here so I can send it to the outlet that's gonna be up there. So we're gonna open this up.
So I'm gonna have to make a hole in the back of the of the plate so I can get the wire through. Okay, so we're gonna tie down the the power cable with the Ethernet cable using tape, and then I'm gonna tie down to the glow rod so I can fish it down, uh, up the wall. Okay, so there's no power right now on this wire, so I'm gonna just terminate it right now. That way I don't have to worry about getting uh, electrocuted or anything like that. So I'm just gonna do it right now, which is easier. I think that should be enough. I don't need more than that. And again, connecting this is pretty easy. Uh, we have power, neutral, and ground. So we're just connecting where they each go. All right. And then uh, the outlet that I use. I use an outlet with Ethernet ports on it, not Ethernet, I'm sorry, uh, USB ports on it. Because I like to use sometimes um, like uh, thumb drives, but the, like kind of like the, like the Roku or the Chromecast. Instead of you having connecting the power here, you can just connect it here and, and um, it'll, it'll, be, um, it'll be less voltage instead of using a, a, a converter, a 120 volt converter. So that's why I ordered this one. I recommend to use this one so when you have your TV. It's perfect because they're actually gonna get used. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think for the for where we're gonna use it, it's pretty it's pretty much worth it. Uh, so <clears throat> golden one, it's for for uh, power, which is the black cable. And then the silver one is for neutral. And then ground will go in the back. And then this one we should have to uh, do like a ear loop, like a loop. And just just let it in there.
So make sure they're in there. Try to tuck it, push it out. It doesn't push out, so it's good. Some people have different preference of whether this goes, this is up or this is down. Um, usually I just match whatever it's in the house. So in this house they have it this way, so I'm just gonna match it and keep it the same. And then usually I like to put the power on the on the left side. So we'll put the power on the left side and screw it in. And now for the other one, I'm going to use this, which just allows the wire to go through. And another thing that I just realized, don't forget your HDMI cable. I almost forgot about it. That would have not been good all this work and you still have one wire showing HDMI should be pretty easy I mean I could just fish it down when I was fishing the other wires I could just let it come down okay so I had to go get another HDMI cable the one I had was not long enough something I I, I was lucky enough that I did have another one another HDMI cable that was long enough if not I would have had an ugly HDMI cable hanging from the from the TV. So now we're gonna connect this here. HDMI one. Alright. And the power cable essentially will get connected there. And this will go like this.
All right, now I'm inside the attic and uh, only a few fit inside and I saw this. So this right here, it's supposed to be the um, exhaust for the fan inside the bathroom and it's not even connected to anything. So all that um, humidity is just going in back inside my attic. So hopefully, um, I mean, good thing I discovered this not, not a few years later, but right away when it when it's, uh, hasn't done any uh, serious damage yet. But uh, here's the connector to the fan for the bathroom. And this is where it's supposed to be connected at. And it wasn't even connected. So usually from what I've seen, it looks what they use to connect it. It's just, they use just tape. That's it. Uh, from what I seen, there's supposed to be like a metal bracelet that's supposed to be holding on to it. So I'm going to have to make a stop at the uh, home um, depot and um, buy a bracelet for that so I can um, connect it properly so that this doesn't happen again. Okay, so here I am where the opening for the wires was. And uh, it was actually pretty easy since it's wide open. So the actual stud is up here and this is exposed. So I literally just dropped the wires and that's it. I got lucky on this one. The next one, I won't be so lucky. The next one I do have to do the cutting. So I bought my drill so I can make the hole, but uh, here I didn't have to, it was pretty easy. Okay, so I already drilled the hole and run the wires through. Uh, since there's no insulation between the walls in the house, it's pretty easy, you just drop the wires. Uh, as soon as you see them on the other side, just pull them out and then that's it. Pretty easy, there are the wires right there. And now, we're just gonna have to run them back to where I'm gonna set up our smart panel. Okay, I'm about to uh, terminate the wires. So we have our electrical voltage and then we have our two ethernet cables. And then um, the reason why this um, box has the flap, so once you run the wire through it, if you pull back, it won't let you do it. So you can pull forward, but not back. It gets stuck in there. So that's the purpose of that. In case someone's out there in the attic or something happens, they try to pull the wire back. It's going to uh, hold it back so it's, it won't go through. So I'm going to just terminate the outlet right here, which is easy. I have plenty of room. And then once I have that, I'll just push the wire back. Same thing with the Ethernet cables. I'm going to uh, fit them through this hole. I'm gonna probably terminate them in here and then push the uh, mud ring back. Just easier to do it here where I have more room versus doing it over there when there's less room. Okay, I have finished terminating the wires. So the outlet's already set up, it's good to go. This was the same thing as before, just push it in. Um, take the coating, the plastic coating off and then just uh, slide it in. And then this one's as before. Uh, they're cat six, so they're supposed to be twisted all the way to the end and they're good to go Here it is And there's the other one All set on this side um, A little bit dirty just got to wipe down the, the wall There's the outlet and then our two ethernet cables and then this one's um, like I said, I like to do this because it's a lot cheaper for once. And then you go straight to whatever uh, device you're going to use. And then in case you're like, oh, I don't want the cables just hanging there. It looks ugly. You just push them back and then that's it. Um, just push them back. And then you don't have to see the wire, right? So it's pretty convenient. I like it. Um, I left this slack because that's what I'm going to need because it's going to go up here. To, an, uh, to my modem, so this is my perfect slack. But uh, like I said, if you don't need it, you just push it back. If you do need it, you pull it back out. And I left enough slack in the wall where it literally it's like maybe about 10 feet each of slack or probably more. So I'm gonna move to the next one now. Here's the TV and it's all said and done. So we have two ethernet cables coming out from here. One goes straight to the Chromecast and the other one is being ran into the TV so you can see it right there there's the ethernet cable connected and now we just have to connect the other end 
Okay, we're back at the attic and now I'm just gonna wire up the electrical. And uh, it was pretty easy. So it had these old connectors on it. It was a twist. So I just took this out. I did one at a time. And um, these ones are super easy. Just literally slide them in. You can see the copper in there. Just slide them in. Slide the next one and the next one and then that's it. So I did uh, that for the, um, this is the power, neutral and then the ground. And I just push it back in here and uh, that's it all done and now the next thing to do will be to get maybe a cover in here so it's not exposed like that but uh, we got power and now we just got to run the Ethernet cables back to the smart panel I'm on one of the last rooms right now and in this room um, I ended up running an Ethernet cable right here I don't need it at the moment, so I'm just gonna probably push it, push everything back and just have it here hanging. Um, I already did the, the connector on it. And then I have the rest of the wires that I ran for the other locations coming down through here. And then go all the way down <clears throat> into uh, the basement. I also had to cut in another uh, section here so I could uh, fit the drill bit. I already put it back in there and I patched it, went in for it to dry. And I put an extra cable here just in case. This one's, I'm gonna use it for the Xbox. Um, there's a stud right here. So this one's by code since the studs divide in the high voltage between the low voltage. And same things I'm gonna do up here. Um, I'm gonna put the high voltage on this side. So this one's gonna be by code divided by stud. So high voltage, stud, low voltage. And same thing down there. So I'll show you how it looks once it's done. Okay, we're all set in this room. So we have our outlet. We have our ethernet cable. We could potentially put an HDMI there as well. Uh, if we have something down here. And then um, we also have or another ethernet cable here. And power. So that should be good to go for now for this one. All right, we're all, we're all done for today. Um, so this is the setup. So this is a smart panel. As you can see, I have two Ethernet switches. And so far, there's only three cables that are blinking. So when you have two lights, it means they're, uh, they're gigabit connections. And when you only have one light, it could be a 100 megabytes connection. Um, there's the setup right there. So that's the feeder comes this way we have a service loop right there and then we have the first cables going up this hole and then we have the rest of the wires going up the next hole over there and uh, we're still not done there's still much work to be done but we are done for this video we did a speed test on this computer we were getting i believe it was definitely less than 20. i don't remember but i think it was less than 20. After all this work that we did today, I'm gonna do another speed test. But before I do that, I wanna show you two things. The first thing I wanna show you is, um, once you connect to the network, you're gonna see which frequency you're connected to. So, every time you connect to the internet, it's up to your router what uh, frequency you're gonna connect to. And uh, mine, lets me connect to 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 frequency 5 gigahertz is a lot faster 2.4 has greater range this is a desktop it's a computer that's not going to be uh i'm not going to be moving around it's going to stay here therefore i decided to lock in the 5 gigahertz that means that every time this computer connects to the internet it would always always connect to the 5 gigahertz frequency and i'm going to show you how to do that if you have a desktop or a computer that you want to force that computer to always connect to the 5 GHz frequency, go to Control Panel, open it, you're going to go to Network, and then you're going to go to View Network Status and Task, and then you're going to click where your network is. You're going to click on Properties, and then you're going to go to Configure, and then you're going to go to advanced so once you get to advanced it's going to let you know the different um, 
things you can do like beacon uh, inner ball multi-channel primable mode wake on magic and packet the one that we're interested in is wireless mode okay so I already set mine up to AC which is the 5 gigahertz frequency that means that my computer will always always only connect to the 5 gigahertz frequency and I, I, I you click on it normally it will always be on auto this is the, the default setting auto especially if it's a if it's a laptop or it's a computer you're always moving around the house I would definitely not do this if it's a computer that you know for sure you're gonna be within close proximity of the router I would definitely do this so now it's on the 5 gigahertz frequency that means it would always have to uh, be connected on the on the fast connection and then you click um, close close it and now it would always always be on 5 gigahertz and close this okay the next step will be to do a speed test make sure everything's good to go and uh, we're gonna do our speed test and as you can see this is way way better than before uh, we were getting um, approximately 15 megabytes per second so now we're getting 138 so it does make a huge difference um, it was a lot of work but it, it was worth it uh, the router it's a lot closer to the computer now and that's why we're getting uh, better um, speed the next step, we're not done yet. Um, the next step will be running an actual hard wire connection all the way to this uh, computer. And um, that will increase our speed to approximately close to the 400s, um, which is way better than 138. But for now, this is good. Uh, we're going to call it a day. And thank you for watching. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Like I said, the next one's going to be uh, running a hardwire connection all the way to the computer.